Thank you for joining us. My name is Dave Patriarch. I'm the mayor of Pemberton Township, and I'd like to give you an update as to how the COVID-19 virus is impacting Pemberton Township. First, a look at the state overall. As of two o'clock this afternoon, uh, the current standing was 6,800 plus or minus uh, positive cases in New Jersey. Uh, in Burlington County, there was 64 cases reported, and in Pemberton Township, we've had two positive cases reported. This information and current up-to-date information can be found on our webpage, uh, pembertontownship-twp.com, and if you click on the coronavirus uh, section on the uh, front page, you will find a multitude of links and of information and uh, one of the ones that I would recommend that you go to is New Jersey COVID-19. Uh, that is the one that gives you all the up-to-date information uh, that is being used by all the professionals uh, and the experts at this time uh, and you can follow along. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is emphasize to you the best practices that are being pushed out by the experts. And we're doing that here also. Uh, the first thing, stay at home. If you don't have to be out for any reason, stay at home. Uh, it's not an easy thing to do. We are a very mobile society, uh, but this is a time when we need to listen to the experts and give our help to them by listening and abiding by their guidance. Uh, social distancing. Make sure that if you are with individuals, if you are in a situation where you have to be with other individuals, that you keep a six foot separation uh, so that you're not transmitting or receiving the virus potentially from an, another person. And also the hygiene. Increase your, your hygiene practices. Make sure that you're washing your hands more frequently. Make sure that if you don't have an opportunity to wash them, you're using hand sanitizer and do it as often as you can. And your workplace areas, desanitize those areas also. But it's going to take all the efforts of all of us to make this a successful battle against this virus. Uh, so with that being said, here at Pemberton Township, We've had to make adjustments in our workplace. We've had uh, about 160 employees work here. Uh, in my eyes, they're all essential. I wouldn't have them here if they weren't essential. And we are taking it serious on how we work the employee through this crisis. Our employees are assigned one person per vehicle. If they have to take two people to get to a job and do a particular task, they'll take two vehicles. Uh, they're all instructed on hygiene, cleaning their areas, their workplaces, staying six foot apart uh, during the day while they are working here and uh, practicing the best practices in social distancing. And we're constantly going around wiping down, disinfecting uh, the areas that our employees come in contact with. And we do not let any public into the building and our employees are also instructed not to have any contact with the public while they're working out and about on their task. Uh, this is to protect the, the employees uh, from potential uh, infection and allow, allows us to continue with the vital necessary functions of government. Uh, we are working to identify certain individuals that have the potential to work entirely from home. It's not an easy task in government service because most of the work that we do uh, requires being on the job, but we are looking to accommodate those individuals, uh, the few that could work in, under those conditions. Uh, we will make those accommodations. I encourage all of our residents to sign up for the Nixel program. It's a uh, notification uh, form of communication that will send out messages to you via your, your phone, your computer, 
uh, and give you the most up-to-date information uh, on emergencies or uh, things that are occurring in the town when we send out a message to let you know that a road is closed uh, and updates on where you can get services on at certain times. Uh, that can be done at nixel.com and uh, I encourage everyone to sign up for that. And lastly, we are putting a plea out there for residents to help us and help your first responders uh, under these stressful times. Uh, you've all heard the call for PPEs, personal protection equipment. The things that we may seem are, you know, uh, take, we take for granted, the mask, the gloves, the gowns, the things that our first responders uh, take as emergency equipment that they need, uh, they're short and we're short in supplying them. We just can't get it. Uh, but they still are responding to emergencies and they are still at risk when they do. So we'd like to encourage all of our residents to help in this, in this effort to protect our first responders, our police, our fire, our EMS, our public works, uh, our employees that have to go out and do something in the township that requires them to have contact with a resident. It may be a water main break whatever it is, we would like them to be protected and uh, it is getting more difficult with the short supplies of PPEs. We've had some residents already call us voluntarily without even asking um, and some businesses that had access to PPEs to uh, help us with our efforts, but it, it is still not enough. There's healthcare workers out there, There's uh, first responders that need our help and I encourage anyone that has a uh, box sitting in their garage. I've surprised myself and had a few in the garage that I wasn't using. I didn't know I had the N95 uh, mask and I donated them. We had a resident, uh, Ken and Ellen Catalano, uh, called me up and said, hey, I, uh, I have some N95s, can I donate them to you? Well, most certainly can, and I, I thank them for their, uh, for their contributions and their thinking of our first responders. Uh, the schools are working with us with the equipment that they have. The uh, uh, businesses that we've reached out to have been helpful, but we still need your help. So if you do have any of the N95 masks, latex gloves, gowns, things of that nature that you can donate that you know you're not going to need any time uh, in the very near future. The supplies will be coming in. It's just we keep hearing that and they're not here, but our first responders still need the protection today. So with your help, we can make that happen. And stay tuned. I, again, I encourage everyone to go to our webpage, look at the information that's being provided and uh, follow the advice of the experts, and at the end, I think we'll be able to get through this safely. Thank you for joining us.